Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show video. In this one, I'm going to be going over my launch day survival guide, aka a complete market guide for the first night of the game. If you guys are new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate you dropping a like on the video and subscribing. I post a ton of MLB The Show content. A lot of it's focused around getting better at the game as well. Uh, so I think you're gonna enjoy it. So the purpose of this video is to answer a lot of questions I've been seeing about how does the market act day one? What should I do with my stubs and my cards day one? I'm gonna give you guys all of the advice that I can and with historical premise this stuff has been pretty consistent over the last couple of years. Of course, this is just like real-life financial advice. Uh, the past does not guarantee the future and uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I think I'm a pretty reliable source for this stuff. I've also been no money spent every single year that I've played MLB The Show, and I completed the Live Series Collection, which is the big collection in the game. I completed that within the first three weeks of the game last year, no money spent. I will also be referencing a lot of stuff on MLB The Show 20, but this advice is obviously for MLB The Show 21. I'll just be referencing stuff to go and look back at past orders or to show what I mean by high diamond, low diamond, stuff like that. So if you see me on the game, this is MLB The Show 20 footage, uh, but the advice is obviously for MLB The Show 21. All right, so let's start to take a look at what type of cards there are in the game for some of you new guys, specifically the new Xbox guys. Um, a lot of the cards you're going to be seeing and pulling on launch night are going to be called what are live series cards these are the actual 40-man rosters from real life baseball and they have cards in game they can be diamond gold silver bronze and as low as common um, and the live series collection involves collecting all 40 of these cards locking them into your collection and doing that for all 30 teams and there's a huge reward at the end the reward for doing this with all 30 teams last year was this 99 mickey mantle card that was absolutely absurd we don't know the rewards yet as of the time of me making this video but i would bet the house that this card is going to be 99 hank aaron this year so definitely something you're going to want to strive for doing over the first couple months of the game cycle and if you're interested i will be posting a separate video diving into exactly Exactly how this live series collection works and my advice on how to complete it most efficiently uh, moving forward that'll be a separate video later on so let's dive into the actual market advice now so the number one question I'm sure some of you Xbox guys are wondering should I buy packs or should I not buy packs MLB the show is very unique in that you can buy the currency which is stubs which is similar to coins and Madden ultimate team you can buy that directly with money so when you put money into the game Typically, at regular prices, when you put $100 into the game, you get back 150,000 stubs. Then you can make the choice to go and spend those stubs on packs if you want to. You do not have to buy packs to be able to have purchasing power on the marketplace, and that is one of the beautiful things about MLB The Show. That being said, you can buy packs if you want to, and they are available in the store, as you can see on launch night. We may have one special pack like this one here, but for the most part, the packs you're gonna be looking at are these standard packs, as they're called in-game. As a general rule of thumb, buying packs in this game is a net loss over the long run. If you want to spend your stubs on packs, you must be okay with losing stubs. If you're no money spent, I would almost never buy packs. It's really not a good idea. If you are putting money into the game launch night and you want to rip packs though, uh, launch night is definitely the best time to rip packs if you're going to do it uh, because a lot of the cards you'll be pulling, gold, silvers, bronzes, are going to have inflated prices with the limited supply of the game having just released. So the long and short of it, should you buy packs? If you're no money spent, I say no. If you are money spent and you want to do it early on, that is the best time to do it, so make sure you do it launch night or the first week. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but when I talk about launch night, I'm talking about early release launch night, which is April 16th. Um, a lot of this stuff will probably still apply on April 20th, the standard release date, but to a lesser degree. Our first core principle for making stubs on launch night is to sell every single gold, silver, and bronze card that we come into contact with. The reason we wanna do this is because these types of cards, their prices are dictated more so by supply than anything else in the game. And their supply is the lowest on launch night and obviously starts to trickle up as more people open packs and as more people play the game throughout the first couple weeks. So because the supply of these cards are low, people are putting in money to try to get these collections done before anyone else. Um, you can get the most value out of selling these cards on launch night. 
So golds, silvers, bronzes, make, sell, make sure you sell them as soon as you can. There is one very niche exception to this and that is with early investment opportunities. So this is the first year as I can recall in the history that Diamond Dynasty has been a thing where the season in real life has started before the game came out. If you guys don't know, on these live series cards, they are upgraded or downgraded during the year based on their performance in real life and they can change tiers. So this 84 wit Merrifield is a great example. He's been absolutely Absolutely tearing it up uh, in real life so far to start the season and 84 is just one point below diamond so he is definitely an upgrade candidate to go diamond so if Whit Merrifield comes out as a gold 83 84 overall and he continues to tear it up in real life then he may be worth holding on to although that it's usually priced into the card and he'll probably be more expensive than other golds so it's up to you at that point whether you want to decide to keep this card in case he goes diamond or just sell him and take the stubs and sell on the hype so we've talked about gold, silvers, and bronzes. We want to sell every single one of those that we come in contact with. Now let's talk about the common cards. These really low tier overall cards that fill out the rest of the team's collection. My general advice for common cards as you pull them throughout the first month of the game cycle is to just keep them. You're probably going to be wanting to do these collections long term anyway. They won't sell for much if you go to sell them on the marketplace. I think it's better to just hold on to them. This will really help you with the live series collection as well because you get stubs and XP for collecting 10 and 20 out of 40 for each team. So if you rack up a ton of commons for a lot of different teams, that's a really easy way to get XP early on in the year. Again, one exception to this, if it is the first few hours of launch, so like literally the night of the 16th, um, you just got the game the first couple hours, common prices are probably going to be a little inflated because the people putting money into the game that are trying to co complete collections day one, they are going to be willing to overpay for these lower tier commons that they just need to fill out the team. So if you are really wanting to, if you really want to sell your commons, make sure you do it within like the first three or four hours that the game is out. Otherwise, I would just hold on to them. It's a really good long term play. You're not going to lose a ton of stubs by not selling these cards. All right, so now let's talk about the fun stuff, the diamond cards. There are two core principles that are going to help us make stubs during launch day and launch week in terms of diamonds. In order to understand this, we need to determine which diamonds are considered high diamonds and which diamonds are considered low diamonds. So in MLB The Show Diamond Dynasty, a high diamond is considered to be a card that is 90 overall or higher. So Aaron Judge, DJ LeMayhew, and Garrett Cole are all considered high diamonds. Remember, this is MLB The Show 20. These ratings will be different when MLB The Show 21 comes out, but I'm just using these cards for reference. A lower tier diamond would be a card between the overall of 85 and 89. So Araldis Chapman, John Carlos Stanton, and Luke Voigt would be considered low diamonds. This distinction is important because high diamonds have a much lower pull rate and therefore have a much lower supply in the long run. And this creates it's a really interesting dynamic as the game starts to progress through its first month or two and that really changes the prices of both of these types of cards differently. So because lower diamonds are easier to be pulled, their price usually drops after launch week and because it's more difficult to pull high diamonds and people acquire more stubs as the game lasts longer and longer, more people are desiring these high diamonds to complete their collections. Typically, high diamond cards actually appreciate and go up in price quite a bit. So our plan for launch night is to sell low diamonds and to keep high diamonds. Again, the reason being low diamonds usually go down in value over time and high diamonds usually go up in value over time. This is a supply and demand issue. I should mention at this point, again, there's an exception. If you are planning on doing the live series collection, which I feel like most of you should be, it's really worth doing. Um, you could arguably keep your low diamonds that you pull early on. We'll go into more detail on this in the long term summary conclusion at the end of the video. Uh, but in general, if you wanted my blanket statement, I would sell your low diamonds and keep your high diamonds, but you can make the argument to keep some low diamonds. So just for reference, I went and dug deep into my MLB The Show 20 transactions. The really cool part about the MLB The Show Diamond Dynasty Marketplace is that it tracks all your transactions for the entire year. So as you can see, this transaction occurred on March 16th of 2020, just three days after early release, and I packed a Ronald Acuna Jr. and sold him for 52,000 stubs. At the time, Ronald Acuna Jr. was an 89 overall, and that makes him a low diamond so based on our 
practice, we want to sell our low diamonds. So I went ahead and sold Ronald Acuna Jr. for 52,000 stubs. I was able to use those stubs for other things, and then eventually, three weeks later, on April 2nd, I bought back Ronald Acuna Jr. for 38,000 stubs. So by selling early, we made a profit of around 13,000 stubs after tax, and we also gave ourselves a ton of liquidity by having that extra 47K-ish after tax available to us earlier on. So Ronald Acuna Jr. was a low diamond. We sold him for 52,000 on March 16th. We bought him for 38,000 three weeks later. That is showing you guys that these low diamonds typically go down in value over the first month of the game cycle. I also didn't end up needing to buy him back later because I got him out of a pack, but again, Francisco Lindor, March 17th, 2020, he was a low diamond. I sold him for 40,000. That is a ton of stubs early on. And just to show you guys some high diamond examples, here is the Mike Trout that I bought for 233,000 on April 5th. Mike Trout on launch night was selling anywhere between 170 and 180,000 stubs. So you can see this card going up in value in just the first three weeks of the game cycle. So again, in summary, these cards that we get on launch night, we are going to sell our golds, silvers, bronzes, and our low diamonds. We, I'm going to be keeping my commons and everybody should be keeping their high diamonds. Of course, this is assuming that your goal is to complete the live series collection in the long run, which I think it should be everyone's goal, in my honest opinion. And again, at the end, we'll be going over an overarching approach for everybody, what your goals should be regarding the marketplace on launch night. Now you may be wondering if our plan is to sell all of our low diamonds, gold, silvers, and bronzes, and high diamonds are in short supply, then how are we going to make a team? We'll be getting to that in the next tip, but there are a ton of ways to play and make stubs and grind stuff offline and online without actually using your team. So showdown moments and conquests are all going to be great ways for you to grind offline without necessarily requiring a good team. Showdown and moments, you don't even need a team at all. They're going to give it to you. And if you think you're good enough to win consistently, you can also grind Battle Royale online against other players and make stubs that way. Again, you will not be using any cards from your actual team doing this. So if you're plan is to not play ranked for the first week or so or at least the first couple days really the only reason you would want good players on your team would be for conquest and that is honestly a long grind so long story short you will be able to still grind stuff even if you sell most of your inventory on launch night if you are no money spent and you sell most of your inventory my approach would be to start grinding team affinity so last year this was done through showdown where you draft a team that's a great way to go about it moment should also provide a couple good cards so no money spent players should just focus on making as many stubs as possible by selling all of the cards that I mentioned and then grinding one of these offline modes. If you are money spent, depending on your willingness and how much money you're putting in, I would be buying as many high diamond live series cards as I can get my hands on. So obviously it depends again on how much money you're putting in, but I'd be trying to get a Trout. I'd be trying to get a DeGrom day one because they're only going to go up in price. And honestly, Trout and DeGrom are going to be two of the best cards in the entire game at launch anyway. So you'll be able to make a sick team like that and those cards should appreciate in value over time even after you buy them. All right, and now I want to get into the absolute juiciest tip of this video. I think it's juicy because I haven't seen anybody else talk about this at all and this is one of the best tips I can give for launch night marketplace we are talking about the diamond cards that come out of the pre-order packs for the special editions in the early access so this past year these seven cards were the pre-order diamonds Mickey Mantle David Ortiz Gary Sheffield Mariano Rivera and the trio from the Braves, Glavin, Maddox, and Smoltz. This year, they've revealed that the pre-order diamonds will be part of the 42 series. As of the time of recording this video, they've only announced five out of the 10 cards that will be in the pre-order pack, but they consist of Bob Gibson, Willie Mays, Jackie Robinson, King Griffey Jr., and Mariano Rivera. Now, why is it important to analyze these pre-order diamonds on launch night? Well, these pre-order diamonds are unique in the fact that they basically only have one supply spike throughout the entire game cycle, and that is exactly at launch. So if you think about it, everybody that will be getting these pre-order diamond packs are people that have pre-ordered the special editions and will be playing on early access. These are 
are free diamonds given out to people that they don't have to do anything for and they're given immediately as soon as you launch the game. So the first thing people love to do is immediately sell these diamonds to get stubs so they can start buying the cards that they want. This creates a huge opportunity for you to buy these cards at a low price immediately after launch. The reason we want to focus on these pre-order diamonds and buying them immediately is because they are typically really good cards between 86 and 89 overall. They're going to be good on your team for several weeks and they typically hold their value extremely well. In addition, they have a huge influx of supply as soon as the game comes out and the supply is almost immediately cut off within the first couple hours or even after the first day that the game has been out. So with the supply of these cards being cut off and the demand of these cards rising slowly over time as people get more stubs in their inventory, these cards typically hold a ton of value for a very long time and they are great to add to your squad because they're basically long-term investments and you can have them for a long time without losing any stubs. So we went all the way back to my very first three transactions of MLB The Show 20, and you can see I did exactly this. I bought pre-order diamond Tom Glavin for 9,100, pre-order diamond Greg Maddox for 9,700, and pre-order diamond John Smoltz for 9,900. You will find the lowest prices of these within the first five to 10 minutes of the game being out. If you buy them an hour afterward, they will be higher price. So if you're having server issues or if the servers are bad in general, or if you just can't get on right at launch, these are still good buys, but you aren't gonna be able to get them for as low a prices as if you immediately go to the marketplace and spend every stub you have on these pre-order diamonds. So obviously once we know all the players that are in the pack, you're going to want to decide maybe five that you want the most out of it since you'll probably be getting one or two from your own pre-order packs and then you'll want to buy as many as you can with the stubs that you get right at launch. I understand if you want to use your stubs elsewhere, but this is just my approach and I really think investing in these pre-order diamonds right away is a really good investment long term. They also help fill out your team and give you some areas to work towards as you start to grind for other cards in Team Affinity or buy live series cards off the marketplace. And just to show you guys that this works, here are my orders 18 days later on March 31st, I ended up selling Smoltz and Glavin back to the marketplace for 11,500-ish each. So after tax, that was basically a break even. So I got to use two diamond pitchers in my starting rotation for 18 days and didn't take a loss. In fact, I made maybe 500 stubs of profit between the two cards combined. Not to mention the pre-order diamonds should be way better cards this year because they are legendary players like Ken Griffey Jr. who are historically very good in the game. So can't stress enough, if you are really itching for these pre-order diamonds or you're just looking for a way to spin your stubs immediately to fill out your team, this is the way to go. You can use them for two, three, four weeks and not lose any stubs long term. So that was my huge tip again that I didn't see anybody else talking about was the pre-order diamonds. That's going to be my number one thing that I do when I jump in on launch night. And now we're going to go over the overarching summary. If you watch nothing else of the video, this last minute is going to tell you exactly what you need to know and what you should be doing on launch night and launch week. So if you come across low diamonds through packs, you can either sell them, which is my recommendation, or or you can keep them if it's a position of need for you and it's a card whose team's collection you are interested in doing very quickly. And also if you can't accumulate enough stubs to buy something else like a high diamond live series card, then maybe just hold on to the low diamonds. But in general, you're just gonna wanna sell them. You're gonna wanna keep your common cards unless it is the first three to four hours of launch. You can then use these common cards later on to do the 10 out of 40 and 20 out of 40 parts of the team's collections and accrue stubs and XP that way. Keep your high diamond live series cards no matter what. These appreciate in price over time and they will be some of the best cards in the game on launch. If you sell them on launch, you will be taking a loss in the long run and you won't be getting to use the awesome cards. And of course, sell your golds as soon as possible unless it's a position of need, a guy that you just like and wanna use, or if it's an early investment like Whit Merrifield who could possibly go diamond within the first couple weeks of the game being out. And me personally, as soon as I get the game, I will be taking my cash stubs, the 25,000 stubs that comes with the pre-order, and I will be immediately going to the marketplace and buying as many pre-order diamonds as quickly as I can. I'm assuming based on last year's prices, this will be two to three of them. So with my two own pre-order diamonds and the two to three that I'll be buying immediately, I'll have four to five diamonds in my lineup 
right away that are going to be very good cards that are locked into their value for several weeks and that will give me direction on where to go for the rest of the 20 to 21 spots in my lineup. Once you have gone through these steps, you can either grind team affinity and offline stuff if you are no money spent, or if you are putting money into the game, you're going to want to use your stubs to buy as many high diamond live series cards as you can. And if you are looking for advice on what to grind day one, should I do showdown, should I do moments, should I do conquest, I will be making a video on that topic as well, so stay tuned for that. That's about all I had to say. I very much appreciate you guys watching this video all the way to the end. Friendly reminder to like it and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting so much MLB The Show content, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.